Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're finally gonna be talking about the debut album from James Bay, titled Chaos and the Calm. So while we're on the subject of Grammy nominations, let's discuss a record that I'm certain a fair few number of you are baffled why I didn't talk about it nine months ago. Because on the surface, the pitch for this album would be right up my alley. And frankly, the more I think about it, the more I'm surprised I didn't discuss the debut album from James Bay sooner than now. English singer-songwriter who drenched his recordings in a blend of Nashville Americana, where he recorded the album, and then brought in soul and English folk to go along with it. He didn't exactly make a huge critical splash, but he quickly established himself as a charting success, especially in the UK. And believe it or not, I've actually talked about this guy before on Billboard Breakdown, more specifically on the list of acts who were charting hits in Canada but hadn't yet broken through in the United States. In this case, it's kind of easy to see why. Up here, we never really lost our rock scene, and that meant that indie folk developed a pretty sizable foothold up here, especially the stuff that crossed over into the rock side. But really, James Bay's appeal is much simpler than even that. If we're looking for an acoustic singer-songwriter that played to a very similar sound as Ed Sheeran but pushed the folk, country, and rock sides more than the pop, hip, pop or R&B sides, James Bay was the artist he probably wanted. And yet, for as much as he was very listenable and agreeable, he's never really been an artist that I've been inclined to explore in detail and never really interested me that much. Maybe I wasn't wild about how polished his sound seemed, maybe I wasn't as moved by his songwriting as so many others were, but until now, I hadn't really cared to dig any deeper into this guy's discography. But apparently the Grammys disagree with me because James Bay is now up for three awards, mostly in the rock category plus best new artist. And frankly, I'd hesitate to say he's the front runner in any of the categories, either by popular consensus or my own personal preferences. But to be fair, he's also nominated for Best Rock Album, and I haven't covered this record in detail yet. And at the very least, he should be better than Muse or Slipknot, right? Well, here's the thing. I've given Chaos in the Calm a lot of listens, and the primary emotion I get whenever I go through it isn't so much happiness or anger or melancholy, but confusion and frustration. And while I'd be very tempted to write this record off as a fairly lightweight wannabe halfway between Ed Sheeran and Frank Turner and unable to find a distinctive balance between them, there are seeds of a good idea here and there on this album, and I'm not quite certain why they didn't come together more. As a whole, I get the feeling I should like Chaos and the Calm a fair bit more than I do, but the more I go through it, the more it just feels kind of formless and a bit generic, not really evolving beyond the basics, and that's kind of a problem. So to start, we need to go through the instrumentation and production in detail. Most notably how this record lacks a lot of the texture you normally hope to find in folk rock, even when it guns for the mainstream. Yeah, the guitar lines are pretty liquid and generally likable, especially when paired with a decent underlying groove to build to a crescendo like on Hold Back the River or Incomplete, or the more explosive swell of Scars or Collide. Hell, when this record takes tentative steps towards a bluesy side, especially on tracks like When We Were On Fire, it actually comes together pretty well, especially with the sparse percussion, the organ, and the decent acoustic momentum, with hints of piano or the aching strings on Move Together that accent the melody. Hell, outside of a few guitar tones that don't really work for me, the most notable being the blaring tone on the verses of Best Fake Smile, probably my least favorite song on the album, most of this record is generally pretty pleasant, generally listenable, and yet on a compositional basis it doesn't really stand out that much. Part of this is the production blasting any element of grit or texture away in order to better gun for the pop audience, but a larger part of it is that the comparison points to Ed Sheeran's Multiply are pretty damn stark, just focusing more on folk rock than any of the hip hop or grime elements that kept the instrumentation more interesting on Multiply. And then there are songs like Craving and especially Get Out While You Can, which might as well be modern Frank Turner songs that I've already heard on positive sounds for negative people. Just far less impressive or willing to rock out with more brazen energy and texture. They're just not as interesting. And part of that comes through in James Bay himself. And honestly, I'm kind of conflicted about the guy. Part of the issue is that while he can be expressive, I'm not quite sure he's certain what genre of folk rock he fits into best. He's got the willowy gentleness that works for the softer side, but he seems much more interested in a more visceral and intense delivery that I like, but I'm not quite entirely convinced he can pull it off. Part of this is that he'll abruptly shift into his falsetto mid-chorus like on Craving, that can feel kind of out of place. And part of it is that he's easily more raw than any of his instrumentation, which can be kind of jarring. But the biggest issue is that his vocal production feels very thin against his instrumentation, with only a few songs giving him a thicker backing choir to really stand out and really elevate his vocal delivery. And that unfortunately also extends to the lyrics. And look, for the most of this album, the writing isn't so much bad as it is lacking in detail. And you know what? That can work in a pop space if you're gunning for broad archetypes or gunning for more pop 
populism, but it also means that James Bay's sentiments about playing to intimate relationships with complicated framing can feel a little bit bare bones and a bit generic. The song with the most lyrical imagination on this album is easily Hold Back the River, the best song here, probably as he's forced to realize how that sort of time can cause a relationship to decay and you really can't get around that, with Scars being a close second as he tries to sustain something long distance. And hell, I'll give him credit for Incomplete as well. The only real love ballad on this album is he and his partner accept each other's flaws. But beyond that, there's an awkwardness in the lyrical tone on this record that really sours me on a fair few songs and it shows up most in the breakup tracks. I get Let It Go trying to end a relationship that has just sputtered out, but rattling through as many of It's Not You, It's Me cliches along the way against instrumentation that's way too gentle to really work feels kind of disingenuous to me. Especially when a few songs later on move together or collide or when we were on fire, he's trying to leverage that relationship conflict or inevitable breakup into something that might last longer. I mean, I respect the intent here, but the execution needed a lot more work, which I'd also say on Best Fake Smile. Let's try to focus on encouraging a girl to follow her dreams and she doesn't have to put up with a crappy waitress job where she's expected to play nice with everybody. Hate to say it, dude, but people have to eat sometime. Or take the two songs where James Bay is yearning for a relationship to come. If you ever want to be in love, a song about trying to reignite with an old flame. Or Need the Sun to Break, where he's hoping this love will bring him some sort of inner peace. I mean, they're not bad tracks, but they feel awfully timid and lacking in deeper nuance. Especially when Mariana's Trench already did the form with far more detail and punch on wildfire this year. So in the end, again, I wanted to like this record, but there's honestly a lot less here than I was expecting, even for a debut album. James Day might have some promise as a front man, but the by the numbers production and instrumentation imitating other acts don't help, and neither do lyrics that never really rise to enough nuance to really stick with me. Now I admit, part of this is bad timing. When you have other acts that approach similar broad strokes and do it better, that's hard to ignore. But even without them, I'm just not all that impressed by this. For me, it's a 6 out of 10 and only recommend it if you're looking for a more folk pop friendly act that's lighter than Frank Turner and more fluid and restrained than Ed Sheeran's recent genre bending. Otherwise, to be honest here folks, you're not missing much. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. You'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation or any other albums you want me to cover before the end of the year and I've got maybe four slots left and three of them are already taken, I'll be more than happy to give them a listen if I can. And keep in mind, this is all my own opinion, for whatever that's worth. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.